Hi everybody, I'm Gene Simmons, and you are watching Vinyl Vagrants. Greetings, vinyl community. Vinyl Vagrants back after a long hiatus. Very long hiatus. John, Chuck, uh, we're here to uh, give our year in review, I guess you could say. Uh, while we have been uh, too busy, I guess, to sit down and, uh, and make a video, uh, I've continued to watch all the vinyl community activity when I get a chance. And uh, I continue to visit those record stores. I was able to go on vacation this year. Uh, anytime I go on vacation, I'm out of town. I always search out the, the local record store, see if I can find a hidden gem or two. And I was very lucky in uh, 2019. Yeah, it's been a great year. I think we've been pretty active too on the concert circuit, whether it was going to see Iron Maiden. Um, I went and just saw King Diamond just a couple months ago. And then we had a couple of amazing KISS shows. We talked about the one back in March in Chicago, and then Chuck and I and another couple of friends went and saw them again in Indianapolis, which was incredible. We already have tickets for the 2020 show next summer, and uh, we're just ready to rock and ready to share with you some finds that we've had over the past couple of months. All right, so going all the way back to the summer, took a family vacation out to uh, South Dakota, Colorado. I stopped in a Fort Collins, Colorado, which is supposed to be one of the greatest college towns in the country, and it was. It was a very nice, nice uh, downtown, a uh, lot of different eclectic shops, a lot of good places to eat, and uh, I stopped in uh, All Sales Vinyl, and I'll put the photo up there. There's a picture of the storefront. All Sales Vinyl had a nice selection. I ended up picking up this... Uh, warrant album greatest and latest and uh sadly this was a, a turned out to be a regrettable purchase they had they had a good selection um i'm always a sucker for the hair metal i thought this was a greatest hits album but it turns out this is a re-recordings of their greatest hits and uh it just doesn't compare to the original yeah, there's nothing so like the original. although i had a great experience in fort collins this uh was not my best purchase of the year. <laughs> the avoid section. All right, then from there, also in a different weekend, I had a chance to take a trip down to Nashville. Uh, I did not go to Nashville seeking vinyl, but when in Nashville, you have to stop and look for vinyl. And of course, I went to the world famous Jack White's Third Man Records, and uh, I had been there before and picked up some good White Stripes uh, vinyl many years ago this year i came away with one record and uh this is uh father john misty recorded at third man records and uh this was a great pickup um just him doing some ac acoustical music and uh this is a very popular one uh, i think there were two other guys who bought this record while i was there and uh you know this this much better purchase than the warrant purchase what would you describe this type of music as Kind of folk rock. Yeah, kind of folk rocks. Yeah, kind of. Um, I, I I'll be honest. Um, I didn't know much about him. I had just heard that this was this was one to get, and I picked it up and I put it on, and uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's Very good. Cool. Good. I'm gonna look in more into his catalog. Well, it was more obscure pickups, even though Father John Misty is is becoming more popular as yes. time goes on. Exactly. All right. So for me. Uh, a, a bit of a theme, but the first one was uh, actually a gift. Uh, this is the Simple Minds double LP that was released in 87, um, based on their Once Upon a Time tour, which is probably the best known album. I'm a big Simple Minds fan, just became a fan probably uh, over the last couple of years. I think we did another album on one of our videos, but just love the album. It was a great gift. It was gifted by this uh, fella to my right, and uh, yeah, just a... If you have any chance or opportunity to check out Simple Minds, always good to start with the live album. I'd recommend this one. Uh, recorded in Paris, last couple of shows. Great stuff. Check it out. Or any Simple Minds for that matter. And then, as a recent purchase, um, I'm a huge Oasis fan. Massive uh, Liam Gallagher fan. This is his new record that came out. It came out in September. 
It's called Why Me, Why Not, uh, based on a couple of uh, art pictures that John Lennon had, uh, that Liam had bought from uh, Yoko Ono. If It's like, I consider like Liam Gallagher's first two records kind of similar to like Metallica's Load and Reload. If you were to take the best songs of each, you would have like the greatest Metallica record or the best like Oasis album or Liam Gallagher album. So anyways, very cool record. Love it. This is a collector's edition uh, that I had to order online because obviously it's imported. But if you get the chance, uh, at least check out some of the tunes on this, at least at a minimum on YouTube. So this was another big purchase for me that I really enjoyed. All right, looking good. Um, my next stop in Nashville was probably the most famous record store in Nashville, and that's uh, Phonolux Records. And let me tell you, that place is a mecca. You ever around Nashville, take the drive, a few minutes south of uh, downtown, and, uh, and stop in Phonolux Records. I picked up some gems there. Um, Nothing really rare, obscure, or hard to find, but some really nice copies. Uh, I got a really clean copy of ACDCs for those about to rock. Uh, I had been looking for that one, so that was a great find. Uh, great. Also, a nice copy of uh, 5150 to uh, add to my Van Halen collection. This was another one that I needed. And again, the clean copies. I'm just, you know, a sucker for anything that's in great condition. And of course, John Cougar Mellencamp's classic, or in this case, just John Cougar, uh, American Fool. Uh, very happy to find the, these, these again, not hard to find records, but uh, excellent condition. So they were nice pickups for me. And my favorite find at the stop, the gem, the treasure, as you can see by my t-shirt, <laughs> Winger in the Heart of the Young. And... Uh, Again, the hard to find hair metal. Uh, always very, get excited when I find it. This is actually a, a record club pressing, but it's still got still got the the really cool uh, winger label on there. And um, you know, one of the main reasons why we're sharing this, of course, is because Kip Winger just came to town a couple weeks ago. And we were fortunate enough to go to a very small club and watch Kip. I'll put up a photo. Here's a photo of Kip with us in the background. You can see me. I circled myself in the background <laughs> in the in the crowd. <laughs> Unfortunately, John is directly behind Kip, so you can't see John in the photo. Probably but um, it's a good thing. <laughs> I can't tell you. I tell you what, the world needs more winger. That's all I gotta say. Um, I think he was a victim of the hair metal label because the talent that this guy has, you know, he played an acoustic set and he sat down at the piano and he knocked out a few tunes at the piano and his vocals are just, you know, they were there. They, they were haven't there. lost a, a, a thing. And, and here, here's a guy who's, who's, uh, I guess stereotype has, has hidden or covered his talent in my mind because, uh, it was a great show. Yeah, and he's a pretty prolific guy. I mean, he's been he's played with a lot of players, obviously, notably Alice Cooper. But it was it was an incredible show. He played my favorite winger song in Who's the One, and yeah, I mean, he just just him. He had a percussionist up there for some of the songs, but it was just him and his twelve string guitar, and he sounded amazing. The sound was great. The venue was really cool. It was intimate, like Chuck said. And it was phenomenal. I was I was blown away. Probably one of the best shows of 2019 for me, and we've been to a lot of shows. Yeah, and so please, hey, please enjoy these few seconds of Who's the One? Kip Winger. What would be your saving now? Dragging on the sheep. My next one, I have a, a two uh, quick run on. Um, the first one is I picked this album or this set up this year. It's a concert for George. This was released back in 2002 on the anniversary of his passing. 
Um, Eric Clapton was the musical director for this uh, session, and the first few sides of the record are mostly Indian music. Um, as everybody knows, Harrison was a big Ravi Shankar uh, connector and uh, lover of Indian music. But the rest of the album is really just more of George's solo work, and there's just some really, really good songs on here, really good versions like Beware of Darkness was phenomenal. Um, my Sweet Lord, uh, sung by Billy Preston, uh, Joe Brown did I'll See You in My Dreams. There's just a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Jeff Lynne is on here, Tom Petty's on here, basically a who's who. Um, I think everybody, but uh, with the exception of Bob Dylan, made this uh, recording. So really cool stuff. Obviously, it's a massive LP set, but, you know, for those, again, you know, interested in a couple of the songs, I'd recommend the three songs that I just uh, referenced just a moment ago. And then this we just picked up. Uh, just in the past couple weeks at the Chicagoland Record Show. This is the Beatles album, Beatles for Sale. It's one of my favorites, probably in the canon of Beatles records for fans. It's probably one of the least favorites. I don't know, maybe that's why I like it so much. But it has a lot, it still had a number of covers. Um, this was released before, you know, they really, really uh, started. I think the first record was either Hard Day's Night, where they had a straight album of just original songs. This uh, album contains my, one of my favorites, Mr. Moonlight, which is a cover. Um, and then it just also has uh, No Reply. You know, there's just, there's just a great number of songs on this record. So obviously with any Beatles record, you can't really go wrong. But the cool thing about this one is a Japanese import. I didn't have it on vinyl. And with certain vinyls like this, I think Chuck and I both appreciate buying the original versions of records when we can, such as this, as opposed to the new 180 gram vinyl ones that you can pick up on Amazon or at the stores. Nothing wrong with that at all. Everybody knows that we're a lover of vinyl in general. But I think sometimes it's, it's pretty unique when you can pick up an old record like this or an old Kiss record, you know, that just had the original. It still has the crackles and everything else and just kind of get that feel, that resonance. All right, yeah, the Chicago Land Record Show. We went to the one in November. Great show. Really came, you know, I, I go there with some hopes, a wish list. And this year, I struck gold. I mean, I found some records that I had been looking for for a couple of years. So it was a great show for me. You had to cut um, yourself up, actually. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Go, you go thinking you're going to spend just a couple hundred bucks, and you could walk away spending a thousand. You could. That's such a great show. Uh, first nice pickup that actually I had been looking for for a while. Uh, little Thompson's Twins here. Um, got some of the classics, Doctor, Doctor, uh, Hold Me Now. So, uh, you know, some of my favorites from the Thompson Twins. This was a nice pickup. It was a breakthrough album. All right. This one, this was a, a, a great pickup. I was excited to get this. Um, ACDC's TNT, not released. This version, of course, not released in the States. And uh, this was an outstanding, you know, in outstanding condition. Um, the seller also had it on sale, like, 30% off. I thought with that 30% off, it was a, a very fair asking price. Um, love the label here, Albert Productions. I don't know if you could check that out. Um, but a uh, nice Australian copy of uh, ACDC's classic. So that this was a, a special pickup for me. Australia. All right. Also, as precious to me as the ACDC record. Britney Fox. <laughs> Britney Fox, another hair metal gem. And again, this is just one of those albums, man. When I put this album on, it just puts me in such a good mood. Like, it, it's, a, it's a mood lifter. Uh, it just picks me up, gives me some energy, whatever I'm working on. And uh, very excited. Been looking for this for a long time. Again, a clean copy. And, um, you know, got the Rolling Stones record chain 499 sticker on there that adds adds to the picture also when we went and saw kiss in indianapolis there was a guy in our row oh, he yeah. had on an original yeah. britney fox concert t-shirt and i gotta cut tell off. you it was <laughs> awesome i think he only wears it maybe once a year that it was it was in pristine condition and uh i i told him i was like man that is the best shirt i've seen all night and he's like He's like, I get more compliments on this shirt. 
It's a gem. I tell you what, if we if Vinyl Vagrants ever hits the lotto, I would like to go in the business of re-releasing all these old yeah. classic concert t-shirts that you just can't find anywhere. Right. And I tell you, there's there's uh there's money to be had in there. But uh Britney Fox, uh favorite track on here, uh of course Girl School, the opening track. But um you know, side long, one of this record. Long really, way to love. Really good. Save the week. Uh, yeah. Goodbye to Jane on the back. In America. I mean, I love a lot of these songs. Good guilty pleasure. Brittany Fox. I think it's just one of those albums too that you, <coughs> on, you just forget how cool the record is. You're not skipping songs, and that's the beauty of vinyl that you're actually forced, for lack of a better phrase, to listen to the tunes again, and you just have a even more of an appreciation for it. Right. Exactly. Uh, also got some good deals on some Talking Heads. I'm continuing to round out my Talking Heads collection. Um, Remain in Light, First Pressing. Also, this was a good find. First Pressing of Stop Making Sense soundtrack. This sounds outstanding. Uh, the cover's not in too good a shape, but again, the record's great. I was happy to add those to my collection. And then another gem, this is a special one for all you blues lovers out there. And I'm no blues connoisseur, I'm no expert. You know, I watch some other channels uh, where some people really appreciate their, their blues collection. Uh, and uh, one of the local channels that I watch also because he's from the area, Dots and Loops. I know he has some psychedelic tunes and he always puts some blues records up. But... Uh, this, if you're a lover of blues and you don't have this album, this is a must add. All right. Hoodoo Man, or sorry, Hoodoo Blues, Hoodoo Man Blues, Junior Wells, Chicago Blues Band. And I'll tell you what, we learned this. I learned about this record from a mutual friend of ours. Uh, he's a, a music connoisseur. He's a fellow metalhead. And uh, one day there, there was a post. He put a post online that there's a company that will take your ashes after you die and press your ashes into a vinyl record. So I asked them, I said, hey, if you were going to have your ashes pressed into what any album, what would you choose? And he, he said this, he identified this album. And this guy, he you know, he's a fellow metalhead. So for him to pull a blues album out, you know, and I know he's a huge fan of Buddy Guy, and he, you know, he's an expert as far as this type of music goes. But um, I was like, I got to hear this record. And sure enough, we go to the Chicago Line Records show, and I found this in a bin of. It wasn't even in a blue no. section. It was just a random find. I was excited. It was to, a late find too. Yeah, I was excited to get it. I brought it home. I put on side one, and it loved it from from beginning to end. There wasn't a skip. It was just this is good listening. So, uh, once again, this is one to find. This is one you must have to your collection. And if anybody is familiar with this record, please add a comment below. Tell me what you think. But uh, I have the big question. Since the you gem. called it out, what would be your Cemetery Gates record? Oh, jeez. You know what? I'm on the spot, I don't know if I can answer that. Because that's that's like getting a tattoo, you know? That's like permanent. What What album? That's... That would take some thought. Obviously, you know, you you could you could jump to, um, you know, being the Kiss fans that we are, Kiss's original album, um, a, as maybe a starting point. But do, do, do you want your favorite album, or do you want an album that kind of matches your personality, you. or uh, you know, yeah, that, that more defines what type of person you are, the, the, the type of music. That's a tough question. And that's a great topic for the vinyl community. Some of you some of you uh, out there who start these uh, polls and contests and things like that, name the album you would you would press yourself, <laughs> yourself into. into right? um, yeah, I, may, that's a future episode for Vinyl Vagrants. I, 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 I'd have to do some thinking about that. All right, there you go. All right, so for me, kind of moving into more of, again, just kind of getting back to the, I, I'm a huge lover. I was a big fan of the Shred Guitar, even starting in the old days, from Not of This Earth with Joe Satriani, uh, Yngwie Malmsteen's Rising Force, all those records. But I picked this one up just a few weeks ago. 
Speed Metal Symphony by Jason Becker and Marky, Marty Friedman. Everybody knows that Marty was a member, a long-standing member of Megadeth. Uh, Becker, he played with David Lee Roth Band. He had a lot of solo work, and they had this uh, combined effort. They had two records, but this is the one that I love. Uh, anyways, for shred guitar people, this is obviously all instrumental. Check it out. Um, it doesn't get any better than this in terms of shred guitar. Jason Becker, as everybody knows, has uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. He's still alive, thankfully. Still making music uh, through a computer, but, you know, pretty cool stuff. So, Cacophony, the name of the band, Speed Metal Symphony, the name of the record. Really cool find. Uh, another one, kind of... And the old hair metal genre, obviously, you know, we have a passion for the hard rock, heavy metal. Rat's second album, Invasion of Your Privacy, 1985. I'm a huge Robin Crosby fan. Um, any, anything from the first three records are amazing, including the first EP. This is obviously the second one, you know, back in the mid-80s. It had all, like, the mauve co color. And I think the girl on the cover is a Playboy model. She was in the Lay It Down video. It has a couple of the, the best hits that you know, but... I just, this is one of those albums like your Britney Fox where I could just play the whole album and not worry or think about what song's coming on. Right. You know, I love Dangerous but Worth the Risk. You know, What You Give is What You Get, which is a single, I think the third single released. Obviously has Lay It Down, You're In Love, but just the guitar work, the, the tunes, uh, the production, you know, it just, it, it's really just a cool hair metal album and I can listen to it front to back over and over again without skipping a beat. And then for me, my next one, and <laughs> as everybody knows in Vinyl Vegas community, we are huge Kiss fans, yes. massive Ace Freely fans, um, and this is probably outside of the 78 solo album, my favorite Ace solo record. It has some of my all-time favorite songs by him on here, specifically Outer Space and Foxy and Free, two just killer tunes um fractured quantum he continued the fractured mirror fractured two fractured three and then fractured quantum um genghis khan is another instrumental on here which is fantastic did a sweet cover of fox on the run which is really good yeah. um and then yeah, just such a great album this this to me was the coming back record for me he obviously has space invader and and the new ones that he's released. But this, to me, is just the, the best one. And I think he has his Origins Volume 2 record coming out in 2020. Yes. So, uh, but for me, this is this is the album for Ace Freely fans. Yeah, I, I, whole, I agree. I love that album. One Ace is best, in my opinion. And then I'm going to wrap up here with a, with a special find. Again, we talked just a moment ago about how we love the original vinyls. And this is a Japanese import of Music from the Elder. The you know, controversial 1981 quasi soundtrack album. This Japanese import actually does not contain the instrumental song, uh, Escape from the Island, uh, which was written by Ace Freely and Eric Carr. Um, but I mean, you know, we could probably have a vinyl vagrant session on music from the elder by itself. Um, it is polarizing and as unique as it was to most fans, it is something, it is a record that you kind of just, you learn to appreciate, you know, and I think there's a lot of licks um, that came from this album that resonate on Creatures of Night and Look It Up. Um, there's a couple of songs on each album that kind of pulls uh, guitar riffs from this record. Um, as everybody knows, this was produced by Bob Ezrin. Um, he also did Destroyer and Revenge. And at the same time, he also did Pink Floyd's The Wall in 1980. So there's actually a couple of Pink Floyd wall guitar licks that are kind of, if, if you, you can pick them out throughout on a couple of Elder songs too. So. I don't know, I, 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 the older I get, the more I appreciate this album. Obviously, Creatures of the Night was a return to form for KISS fans after Dynasty and Unmass and the Elder, but, you know, for, for me, that, that's the cool part. You know, as we get older, we start to appreciate this stuff more. Um, you know, I love kind of finding these little gems, if you will, and this is a Japanese import, and it's pretty cool. All right, yeah, last few finds. We actually, luckily, have a local record show in town, and... Uh, I had two great pickups from that show, one being Quiet Riot 3, all right, QR3, a little underrated album from Quiet Riot, um, strong from, from beginning to end. Of course, uh, you know, The Wild and the Young is one of my favorites on here. And uh, I love Twilight Hotel. Twilight Hotel, uh, but, you know, just some, some just solid rock tunes that they, they continued to put, you know, put out the good music and... QR3 was a, a valuable addition to my collection. And then, finally, 
Finally, I pick up a copy of the originals. Not just any copy, however. This is a Japanese pressing. Sucker for those Japanese pressings. <laughs> That's right. And look, the, the, the cover is okay. The, the, the Obi was missing. All right. But the records, you know, when you pull out an album, look, some albums look like they have been eaten off of. Mm -hmm. And then there are albums that you can eat off of. And that's what I look at. And these records look like you could eat off them. They look like they've never been played. And I put the original Kiss's first album, I put this on, listened to it after I got home. And this Japanese pressing of all the copies, I've got the repress, I've got the one of the original pressings of the album without Kissing Time. This originals, to me, to my ears, sounds the best. This is my go-to when I'm going to drop the Kiss albums on these copies. Does this have love, Kiss and Time on it? Love them. Um, for the, uh, yes. Okay. For, yes, it does. So, um, you know, because these were released, like, after all three, obviously, all right. three albums. Yeah, so. just before Destroyer, I think it came out, or right. just after. But, um, you know, very excited to pick this up at, 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 a, at a good price because it was missing the OB. And there is an Originals 2 that Chuck right. and I are continuing yeah. to seek out. It's a Japanese release only, whereas this was actually released in America and Japan. But the Originals 2 obviously picks up Destroyer, Rock and Roll Over, and Love Gun. And it has masks, and it has pictures, and a booklet. Uh, but that one is even more hard to find. And we've seen people asking anywhere from 300 to $700 yeah. for it, based on yeah. the condition, based on the quality of the masks inside and everything else so i almost had a copy for a very fair price but uh just kept it just didn't work out the 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 one time i went to buy it the dealer didn't have it and then the next time he had it and then that time i didn't have the money and so he just and then finally he somebody else jumped on it so right. it's the way it goes That's but if you're gonna have goes. one it's this one yeah 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 great great pickup great find glad to add it to my collection so uh, that's that's our year in review. Overall, not a lot of activity. Uh, we hope to be more active in 2020. Sure. Uh, hopefully, we can put these you know put these videos out more often as we make our journeys to the record stores. As our collection becomes more complete, it's harder and harder to find the things yeah. that we truly want. We find ourselves uh, not just picking up any any old album that we. Uh, that we spot right you know it's, uh, well i think it's it's proof because you're a massive acdc fan mm -hmm. and when you found for those about to rock it was like okay i have to pick this up i don't have it on vinyl so right, we just appreciate right. again mm -hmm. the sound of vinyl and putting that needle to the to the record and just listening to it so we do find ourselves you know with our cd collections now we're trying to recover it on vinyl especially mm -hmm. and to chuck's point it's really even more <coughs> unique trying to find that gem Right when you're looking at the store, so now I'm I'm gonna be searching for some Howlin' Wolf albums, right? Because that's another recommendation. He's been a number of different soundtracks. I'm like, oh man, that's a really good song. I gotta pick up a Howlin' Wolf album. So as we find those uh, gems, if you will, we'll be picking them up and we're looking forward to sharing with you all in 2020. Yeah, I, I still my grail for 2020 continues to be Skid Row, Slave to the Grind. I will continue to search out a copy of that. I, I, you know, I guess I could pay a lot of money and order it online, but that's not what it's all about. You know, I want to, I want to find one out in the wild. I'll still, uh, I'll still, uh, look forward to, to looking for that album. But that being said, uh, happy new year. Uh, we wish all of you a, a healthy and prosperous new year and, and hopefully you find your grails out there. Um, also, you know, if you happen to know anybody else in the vinyl community, that could give us a few more subscriptions. We we were ecstatic. We we have a hundred subscribers, exactly a hundred on the nose. And every once in a while, people clean up their subscription list, and we may drop below a hundred. We'd like to stay just above a hundred. You know, we we're not looking for a thousand subscribers. If we get that, that's great. But if you know anybody who needs another channel or two to add to their subscriptions, please pass us along. So we, you know, if we could get 10 or 15 more subscriptions just to stay over that 100 mark so we could go live if yeah, we, we ever go, wanted yeah. to. I think that's for um, 2020. That's my goal is for us to maybe do a live do session a, yeah. too, you know, because we do hit up a lot of concerts. We do hit up a number of shows and a couple of record shops. So even if it's just a two-minute quick video, 
you know, something just to share with you all. And again, as Chuck said, we enjoy watching your videos as well. We really, some of the videos are amazing, uh, very in depth. Um, I've, I've just watched a, a video the other day um, as it related to uh, King Diamond. And uh, the same guy did a, a hour long video on Wasp and it's just, <laughs> the passion was there the whole way. So some of those videos are really fun, really interesting. We love sharing our music with you. We look forward to seeing you in return. All right, so until next time, vinyl lovers, keep your speakers shaking and your turntable spinning. And uh... Thanks for checking us out. Thank you. Take care.